Ladies, we are called to be set apart. First, makeup and hair. What does the Bible say about makeup and hair? What will honor the Lord? The picture on the right, this is what's meant by braided hair, braids with gold. First Peter 3.3 3 says, your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as braided hair or gold jewelry or fine clothes. If a lady showed up to church looking like this, would you think her puffed up? Is this modest and humble? Our bodies are a temple. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Do you know why Paul spoke of women being quiet and dressing right? The new Roman women could be both brash and bold. The new wife or widow in the late Roman Republic and early empire was one who pursued her social life at the expense of her family's responsibilities. In addition, these women could often be outspoken, even aggressive in public settings. This is why Paul spoke the way he did. Just to say that again, Paul was addressing the Gentile converts in the Roman city of Ephesus. Paul needed to bring order to the Sabbath day services because the wealthier Roman women were enjoying newfound freedoms. He was basically giving them some guidelines on how to behave. I don't like using that word behave, but it fits here. If you will, in Sabbath services. And no, Paul did not hate women. Do you believe that God wants his bride to be puffed up? I will show the world how much money I have, the furs, the diamonds, the colored hair, etc. Or does God want his bride to be beautiful, soft in heart, original as he made us? Each one of us has the beauty and hold the light of God. Only you can answer for yourself. Do not let people force or judge you into doing something. The Holy Spirit will advise you. And this is a warning. Mothers and fathers, beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. There is another reason we want our daughters covered up, is that there are wolves in our midst, and make no mistake about it. This is a tough read, I do understand that, thinking that any one of your congregation could be a stalker of the young. But I speak from experience on this matter. And next up is clothing and jewelry. As a daughter of the Most High King, would you dress like this? What kind of woman would you say the world would call her? Would a godly man want this woman as his wife? If a man was to look at this lady, does she look godly or worldly? Would a godly man consider a woman like this to be his wife? Will he trust her not to display her body to the world? If you are single, your body belongs to you. If you are married, your godly husband is who you should dress for also. Every day we need to present ourselves wholly, a Proverbs 31 woman, the best we can. We belong to God, not mankind. We don't dress to impress. We dress to cover our beautiful bodies, small or large, only to be uncovered by our husbands that he may enjoy the fruits of marriage. Not saying dress like this, and not saying dress like this. Be modest, be the most beautiful you God created. 
modesty and moderation. A good guideline is this. If you spend more time doing your makeup than reading your Bible, you've made makeup your idol. May God bless each and every girl, teen, single woman, married woman, mother and grandmother that reads this. Only God, the Most High, can change your heart through Jesus Christ, his Son, and the Holy Spirit. There isn't much teaching from the pulpit on this subject, which is sad. The pastor and his wife should be the perfection of the modest life. It took me years to come out of the puffed up lifestyle, and I was very puffed up. If you struggle, leave a comment and I can answer your questions or simply pray for you on your journey. In summary, there is nothing wrong with wearing jewelry, makeup, or braiding your hair, as long as it is done with God in mind and in a modest manner. Things we are speaking of today should never replace your good deeds or your humble spirit. Intent is also a big factor in this. As a Christian woman, we should not be focused so much on our outward appearance, so much so that we neglect our spiritual life. And that's a big one. A worship service, as Paul was saying, should be focused on God, not on us. I, as a woman, was spending an inordinate amount of time and money on my appearance. The problem was my priorities were misplaced, even corrupted really. The expensive exterior with jewelry, makeup, cars, and clothing was the result of an unchristian life. The Lord spoke to my spirit and taught me about being changed. Thank you, Father. I'm a frugal farm wife. I love the word frugal, so I'm going to use it here. Be frugal in all your dealings. Careful to use only as much money, food, makeup, hair products, clothes as is necessary. Take no more than you need and do not be a stumbling block to others. So on this slide, I've given you some biblical passages for further study. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11, speaks to both men and women's hair. We always need to think of our godly perspective on how we present ourselves to the world. We should care about the spiritual state of our brothers and sisters in Christ, not judgy and not critical. A gentle and quiet spirit, you can see the candle video that I've done here. Uh, copy and paste the link into Google it's about a minute 27 seconds and i think you might enjoy something positive and upbeat god bless you on your journey